of weight it was my too till I met you do you remember that day and I was breathing but not alive and all my failures I tried to hide it was my dream till I met you but this is what he did you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that place out of the darkness into your glorious day yes hallelujah oh if you remember that day he called you out now your mercy has saved my soul can anybody testify of that and now your freedom is all that I know. The old may do. Jesus, when I met you, yeah, you called my name. And I ran out of that grave. Oh, hallelujah. Out of the darkness. Into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that place, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the air that I'm breathing. Say, I have a future. I have a future. My eyes are my open. Eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Yes, hallelujah. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you just magnify him right now? Why don't you just think back to that day when he called you out? When he called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I believe there's victory in the house this morning. I don't know what you may have brought in here with you this morning, what, what struggles, what battles may have come, may have tried to follow you here, but, but there's a victorious king in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Every 
situation over every nation. Every enemy is coming, every stronghold is brought down. I speak victory, I speak victory. We're bringing home every son and daughter, rulers of darkness have to bow.
every situation, it's over every nation. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of the Lord. Death has no sting this morning. Oh, and life has no end. Woo. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. Well, if the elders don't mind to help me this morning, pray. We've got a couple of names on this list we'll read off. St. Mary's, we have George Thacker, Jane Morris, and Nancy White. King's Daughters, we have Sister Thomas. For cancer, we have Vanda Howe. John Myers, Donna, Donna White, Joseph Hose, and Pam Hose, Callie Boyd, Eddie Hill, Brenda Rogers, Pam Edmonds, Ron, Ron Meeling, Harold Hoffman, Jack McGlasky, Natalie Kruger, Kelly Masters, Barrett, Sheila Edwards, Charles Maynard, Luna McClanahan, Gloria Faulkner, Dream of Madovich, Tommy Amos. Nursing homes, we have Bruce Wright, Lova Wright, Lucille Dirch, and Barbara Aliff, Patty Sugay, Wilma Tolliver, Shelby Tackett, Gary LeMasters, Carol Soule, Dale Kermeens, Rolanda Johnson, Lily Markham, Donna Glassnow, Vicki Wilkes, Joyce Holly, Annabelle Adkins, Jerry Ty, Betty Mendoza, Suzanne Mamel, Marsha Morgan, and Alminda Kermeens. Special requests, we have Bob and Linda Rose, Robert Barrett, Hayden Smith, Gil Rogers, Madge Wells, Tom Moreland, Israel, Jack and Vicki Poland, and the Walls family. At the home, we have Burl Duncan, Ken Davis, Bob and Jan Kitchen, Brandon Armstead, Gwen Blevins, Joe Lester. I see Brother Joe this morning, praise God. Chuck Atkins, Judy Myers, Marilyn Bradley, Jesse Smith, Francis Barrett, Bob McChristian, Paulette Holly, Davy Kitchen, Gary Ross, and Chad Angel. And I have a lot of names on here for salvation, but I know a God that can take care of every need on this list, amen. If you got a need in your body this morning, this morning's called Victory Sunday for a reason. Why don't you come forward and get anointed with oil and get your victory this morning? Maybe you got an unspoken request. Maybe you'd like to be known by an uplift of a hand. And while you got that hand lifted, why don't you raise your other hand right now and start praying to the King of Kings. Lord, I love you. God, I need you this morning. I need that salvation back in my life. God, I want to be righteous in your view, God. God, whether it's physical or mental this morning, God, take care of it. Have your hand upon us this morning, God, every need on this list. Whether it's cancer, whether they're ill at home, whether they're in a hospital room right now, God. Come down wherever they're at and heal their bodies, heal their spirits, God. Take away worry this morning. Take away depression this morning. Take away any bad thought that's pulling me away from you, God. Because I know the blood you shed at the cross was for me and my sins and every iniquity that's in my body. And God, when you rose out of the grave for me, you took my sins with you and you cast them in the sea of forgetfulness, God. Oh, hallelujah. God, I want to get closer to you than ever before. I don't want to be lost in the world. I don't want to be lost in the world. I want to be lost in you this morning, God. God, I want to see my family saved. God, I want to make heaven crowded this morning. Oh, hallelujah. God, I love you. Oh, and I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for water baptism. Oh, and I'm so thankful for that blood that you shed, God. Oh, Jesus. God, those that are ill at home. Those that have special needs on the other side of that camera, God, touch them right now. 
those that are walking forward that are being anointed with oil, God. Enter in their lives. Oh, oh if it would be appropriate, if you're with your family this morning, why don't you take your family member by the hand and start praying with them? See, because we want to be unified this morning. We want to be unified in family, in church. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thank you this morning, God, for what I already feel, for the victory that you're dishing out in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Oh, help this church grow, continue to flourish. Let there be a revival here this morning at this altar, God. Oh, and in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're still praying, keep praying. There's special needs in this house this morning. And you don't want to leave the same way you came in. I want to leave changed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you wish. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here in the house of God with us. It's so good to look back there and see friends and family members. You look great. Let's, let's, just, let's just give ourselves a hand clap. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Yesterday, we had a, a really good day. There was about 17 of us, I believe went out and we canvassed several neighborhoods in Huntington, passing out um, door hangers. And we have these little cards inviting you to the cathedral. And I ran in, Jamie and I, we took one, one portion of town and we ran into probably, I don't know, six or eight individuals. I mean, we hung 50 some, we went and knocked on probably 50 some houses because we ran out of flyers. But we, we personally got to invite six or eight I don't know how many individuals and uh, you know it felt good talking to them just welcoming well or not welcoming but asking them to come to the cathedral and come and worship God with us it was a good feeling you felt like we were doing something productive and some of you may be here today that we shook hands with yesterday and uh, if you are I want you to know that you've come to the church with a warm welcome warm welcome and uh, so good to have you here. We've got some announcements I'd like to make. And uh, Brother Koosman isn't here today. He, he contacted me a few moments ago. He's um, down the West End, the church in the West End, Brother Kitchen and his wife were at a wedding yesterday. And I guess, I guess they got, the pastor and his wife got some food poisoning. And they're terribly sick. So Brother Koosman and his wife are down there ministering today, looking out for that church. And I'm I just wish them the best of luck, and uh, that's kind of dropped on you at the last moment. You have to pick up the ball and run with it, you know, and, and um, we're proud of them. And uh, I'd like to make some announcements, and first of all, I'd like to say this. During our Easter campaign, we call it the gold and the silver team, based upon your alphabet. And out in the foyer, there's a chart that tells you. So I want to, <laughs> first time I think I've ever had to do this. I'll total the points tonight and give the church the total. But I don't ever remember 
running behind on the silver team. The silver team has always prevailed, and they've always led throughout the whole program. And right now, as of right now, there's 420 gold points and 210 silver points. So, I mean, I don't remember ever, ever, and in 30-some years, I don't remember the gold team ever nearly or on the verge of thumping us. So, uh, so what I'm saying is, I'm dropping a really big hint here. If you have not put your points in, put them in. Okay. <laughs> That's gold and silver. And I want to say this also. We've not had, uh, for a long time, we haven't had a lot of gold. That's, I mean, Brother Tim, Brother Tim has got a tremendous con collect con connection. He has reached out into the community, and he's got a lot of family. He's been busing people in here on our church bus. And those points are, ra are racking up for the gold team. And... Um, Jeremiah over there, he's been bringing a lot of family and friends, and he's a gold team member. So, I mean, golly, I don't know what you do. You, what do you do, cripple them or something? I mean, what do you do? You know? <laughs> Praise God. No, I'm just glad. The whole purpose of that is to get our family, our friends, our children into Sunday school with us. That's what it's about. It's what it's about. So I would like to make some announcements here. Um, Bishop will be preaching tonight at 6.30 p.m., and uh, remember this, ALC Youth Ministries have got chocolate peanut butter eggs out there in the foyer. Please stop by and pick those up. They are delicious. Jamie, Sister Robbins, and I have had a couple of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I could not get my suit pants on this morning. I, I'm guilty. I eat too much. I eat too much. But we, they are delicious eggs. Grab them up. Help the teens. That helps them with their trip down uh, to uh, NAYC this year. And um, let's help them. Also remember this. We'll be taking up uh, probably, it may be tonight. If not, it'll be next week for sure. But we're going to be taking up our um, um, Save Our Children offering, which I've told the church over and over. Here on the, uh, my right and my left, there's these little purple um, cards. Fill them out. They're pledge cards. And um, we will send that in. Uh, also, for the safety of our children, we ask that you dropping them off, picking your sons and daughters up at, at the stair, upstairs, Sunday school department, that you only use the main doors, not the doors by the location off of the foyer. This helps us to keep watch over your children. Okay, I didn't, I hadn't read that prior. But yeah, we want to keep our children safe and make sure they get accounted and know where they're at. Tuesday night will be a, a Bible study at 7 p.m. Thursday at 7 p.m. there will be a half hour Bible study and half hour prayer meeting. Brother and Sister Walls takes care of this. And um, youth Bible studies are on every Tuesday, or I'm sorry, every second and fourth Wednesday of the month over in the Cedar Sanctuary at 6 p.m. April the 5th is uh, Friday Youth Night at Sanctuary of Praise in Cloden, West Virginia. That is my brother in law. He pastors there, Brother Gentry and my little sister Bethany. They pastor there, and we want to try our youth and any adults, please participate and help out. Uh, April the 19th and 20th is Purpose Institute. And um, remember this, April the 25th and 27th is the West Virginia, Western Maryland Ladies Conference in North Charleston. And you've got to get these tickets. I think, I think we've already passed the early registration. I think it's if it's not, it's tomorrow. And um, uh, you, can, you can purchase them at the door. But remember this, we are also working on a new church directory. I've had do uh, several dozen people over the last couple of years. Brother Robbins, when are we going to get a new church directory? Well, we're in the process. So I want to encourage each of you. Sister Robbins and I have kind of dropped the ball on getting note cards. We're going to get them. But you're welcome to get your own note card. Write your information on there or write it on a piece of paper. Give it to me because we're going to start collecting these. And we're going to put together a new church directory. Also, April the 27th, the women will be going to that conference up in Charleston, and we are planning a men's breakfast here at the cathedral. And um, we're excited about that. We've, I, we've had several in the past. They're great, and it's good fellowship with the men. We'll try to come up with somebody maybe to give a little 15-minute speak, uh, uh, speech or a little talk to us to encourage us, and uh, we'll come up with something there. We're putting together a menu now. So men, mark that on your calendars on the 27th of April. It's a Saturday morning. It'll probably be about 8 o'clock. 
but I'll start putting that into bulletin next Saturday. So now our ushers are ready. I want to encourage you to dig down deep. Given this offering, you cannot outgive the Lord. We're going to take up our tithes and our offering here in just a moment. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We are so thankful, Lord, for the presence we feel. Oh, God, we felt your presence when we walked in this door. And, oh, God, we know, God, that you're alive and well, Lord. And we serve a living Savior. Lord, we're about to bless you, God, now by giving, Lord. We pray, God, that this church can reach out into this community and tell others about you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Come right on, ushers. Sister Robbins.
Well, happy Resurrection Day. Amen. I'm so pleased to see all of you here. Thank you for coming out and being in the house of the Lord. And uh, Easter is that special time. My late father-in-law said he lived from spring to spring just so he could be in an Easter morning service. So we appreciate each and every one of you being here. Many of you I know, too many for that uh, are here that are friends. I miss calling your name if I start, so we're not going to do that. But would you stand with me? I'm going to read some Bible, and then I'm going to act like a preacher. Hallelujah. You do look nice. Thank you for being here. Revelation, the 12th chapter, verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> Before anybody gets nervous, this is not a sermon about the end time. This is a sermon about our Lord Jesus Christ. I will tell you that uh, for the sake of you that are interested, and that is there's been an awful lot said about this eclipse that's coming next week. I am going to talk about that this evening. So if you're interested in the eclipse and all of the, the people are su suspicioning that it may have ramifications for it, if you want to hear something about it, you're invited to be here tonight for the service at 6.30. I'm always glad to see my family. Thank you all for being here today. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And when the dragon saw, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. I'm going to preach to you today from the scripture that said, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. I'm preaching how the blood of Jesus' power was invoked. How did he put it to work for us? God bless you. You may be seated. Resurrection morning. <clears throat> Contrary to a lot of people's opinions that get wrapped up in religious tradition and not as much in history, is the fact that Jesus did not rise at sunrise. In fact, Jesus' resurrection happened actually the evening before. In the language of the Jewish economy, the Lord measured from the book of Genesis on, he, when he talked about the first day, the second day, the third day, etc., he said it was from the evening to the morning of the first day. And the day of the week in the Jewish economy, it begins at sunset. The, the evening, that starts, that starts the next day. So there's other things that I could go into, but I won't. But you take my word for it for right now, that when Mary and Martha and when Mary and Salome and the other women went to the tomb on that first day of the week, the Bible says it was still dark. It was dark when they got there. And he was already out of the tomb. He'd been out all night because he was to rise the first day of the week. And the first day of the week had begun at sunset the night before. So having said that, here it is in John 20 verses 14 through 18. And when she had said, she turned herself back and she saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Why seekest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she sought that he was the gardener, and she said, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith to her, and this is very important, Touch me not. For I'm not yet ascended to my Father, 
But, I go, but you go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and they had spoken, that he had spoken these things to her. Now, here, here's what's important about this. I don't know how long it took, but what I do know is this, is you must realize that in the, in the operation of God, things can happen in nanoseconds because God is so complete with what he does. They talk about an angel. The Bible talked about Lucifer even as an angel that fell as, a, as fast as the lightning. I think, uh, what is it, 200 and, 210 miles a second is the speed that light travels. So we're not sure all that's involved in it, but what we do know is we have a pattern that's laid out in Scripture that tells us several things that happen, possibly in minutes, possibly an hour. The Bible doesn't give us that, but what we do know is this happened after Jesus Christ saw Mary Magdalene and she saw him. And he said to her, don't touch me. Don't touch me because I'm going to ascend to the Father. And a lot of people ask the question, why did he say that? Well, there, there is a pattern that's written. The Apostle Paul did a fantastic job in helping us capture things. And that is you, you have to read the Bible for what it says and for, not for what somebody told you that it said. And one of those things that's very enlightening when you read the Bible that way is in Ephesians 4, verses 7 through 10. And it says, For unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, and now listen to this. This is the, let, 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 let me make it very clear. In Genesis, the first chapter, the first verse of the Bible said, in the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. And the earth was void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit moved on the face of the water. That's what he did. But the rest of the book of Genesis, the first chapter, goes into detail to tell you how he did it. Now, Paul is going to jump ahead 40 days from the resurrection, and he is going to make a misstatement. He said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, what it starts there to tell us is this. That's what happened on the day that he ascended on high. That's when they followed him out as far as Bethany and he blessed them. And he lifted up his voice and he was received up into glory out of their sight. And when he was received up into glory out of their sight, two men and White apparel stood by and said, Why stand you gazing upward? This same Jesus that you see go away is coming again in like manner. And so it tells the story that he ascended on high. He led captivity captive. I'll tell you what he led in just a few moments. But I want to give you this. Here is the sequence of that resurrection day. And again, I don't know how long it took. I just know that it happened. And it happened because the Bible said that it happened. And I read to you this. In John 20 and verse 16 and 17, she turned to him and he said, Don't touch me. I've not ascended to my Father yet. Now, what I want you to get a grip of is this. She was looking at the original resurrected body of Jesus Christ. Stop and pause there. It had not been glorified yet. You say it hadn't been glorified. Why is that? She was looking at a body just like they looked at when they saw Lazarus raised from the dead. She was looking at a body just like the son of the widow of Nain looked after Jesus raised him from the dead. They were looking at a body just like Jairus' daughter looked when, they raised, when he raised her from the dead. There had not been a change. There hadn't been a spiritual happening to it yet. One of the reasons for that, here stands that natural body standing there, and he's standing there telling them this, this body is going to ascend to my Father, which is in heaven. Now, what happened? 
Well, first of all, he tells them to go do something else while he takes care of this. He told them, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. While y'all are getting things together and going to Galilee, I got something I got to go do. Now, here's what I want you to understand, is that when the next time that they see Jesus, everybody say the next time. The next time they see Jesus, it will be a glorified body. There's a transition that's going to take place. I'd like to share some of that with you today, and that is this. He said, he said here's the way it went. Number one, if you go on to Ephesians 4 and 9, now he ascended. After he said, it, it told us that he led captivity captive and he ascended on high, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's that. Now, the next verse after, after Ephesians 4 and 8, he says Ephesians 4 and 9. Now he's going to tell you how all of this was accomplished. Remember, he made heaven and earth. And then it goes on in the book of Genesis to say what he did on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. That all was to follow. Now, knowing that that was to follow, it is very, very interesting. It's very interesting to get your head wrapped around this, that this is the sequence of what took place. First of all, after he told Mary that he had to ascend to his father, she went on about her business, and the Bible said that he ascended. Now, that he ascended. Why did he ascend? Did they see him go? Not this time. Because he went to do the work of the high priest. Hebrews 9, 11 through 28. Can I read you several verses of Scripture? What would church be without really reading the Bible? One of the big problems we've got in the society today is we've got a lot of motivational preachers for uh, speakers for preachers, and we don't have near enough Bible preaching. I'm going to preach the Bible. Here's what it said in Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 28. It said, But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of a building, and then it goes on to say, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the bull of blood of bulls and goats and of ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctified through the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purged your conscience, Listen to what it says, purged your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a new testament is of the force after men are dead. Otherwise it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept of all the people according to the law, listen to this, he took blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet and wool and hyssop and sprinkled them upon the book and all the people saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath joined to us. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood both in the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Key scripture, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It was therefore necessary that the pattern, everybody say the pattern, the pattern of things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were with a better sacrifice than these. For Christ is entered into the holy place made without hands, which are the figure of the true, of the true, but unto heaven itself, now he appeared in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy post every year with blood. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, everybody say once. 
in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away the sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Here's the one thing I want you to hear me now. When Jesus Christ ascended on high, he was going to do the work of the high priest. What did the high priest do? Whenever that Moses built the tabernacle, and in heaven, in heaven he saw the pattern of what the tabernacle should be on earth. Moses went up into the mountain, God rolled back the scroll, showed him the, par the tabernacle that was in heaven, and when he showed him, he showed him some things of importance. There was a brazen altar, there was a labor of water, actually here's what it was. He saw a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Then he saw the crystal sea. Then he went a little farther and he saw the seven golden candlesticks and he saw the bread of life and then he saw the altars of the saints in front of him and beyond that he saw the throne of God. When he came back to earth he built the tabernacle according to God's direction after the pattern of what he saw in heaven. So on earth he built a brazen altar for the sacrifice, a labor of water representing the crystal sea and he built the seven golden candlesticks, a table of shoe bread, and the altar of incense. And beyond that was a place called the Holy of Holies, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant was that people have so much to say about. Here's what he did. When he went through there, after he had it all built, the way that he dedicated it was by taking ample sacrifices, the right sacrifice. Can I tell you folks something? A lot of people think that if you're going to serve God, just any old way will work. Not true. You have to be obedient. He has said some things because they're necessary to say, and there are some actions that's necessary to take, and there's some lives that's necessary to live, and there's some experiences necessary to have, and there's prayers that's necessary to be prayed. Having said all that, I want you to know he gave him explicit instruction on what to do. And as he did, as he did, the one earthly substance that made it to heaven, that was not changed, and that stayed there, I'll just say it to you like this. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath his flood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains. He was, his blood was shed for the perpetuation of the sins of the whole world. Everybody say whole world. Eight billion people today. More people are alive today than lived from the beginning of time up through World War II. That's what kind of exponential growth that we've had in the earth. But what I will tell you is this, there's, a, there's an agreement that God made. And the agreement that God made with us is this, he was going to take care of the sins of the whole world. Now, now, I don't know who you are here sitting this morning, but I'd say that there's ventured that said, yeah, I'll go to church on Easter Sunday, but... Uh, there's no way I can live the kind of life I need to live because of the things that I've already done. I'm too mean. I've been so bad. I've done things that I can't give forgiveness for. I'm here to tell you, don't believe that. Well, if I start living for God and I make a mistake, what do I do then? Don't worry about that either. The Bible said, sin not, little children. But if you sin, you've got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is able to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. How powerful is this blood? Let me tell you God's deal. God's got a deal. You ready for this? One time he was talking to Peter. 
Now remember something. God never asks more of you and me than he expects of himself. Because the Bible said, let the husbandman be the first partaker of the fruit. Okay? So the first partaker. This is God's principle. And I'm talking to you right now because I believe somebody is going to find a real feeling of relief in just a matter of moments. That's this. You ready for this? He said, Peter, Peter said to the Lord, Lord, how oft shall I forgive my brother in a day? And he was reflecting back to an Old Testament scripture that was about Cain and Abel. And he said, oh, he said seven times Peter's answer came, seven times. And the Lord said, oh no, Peter, you need to forgive a person in one day, seven times 70. Mathematicians, 490. Come on. Now, if you'll take 490 and you'll divide it into 24 hours, you'll find that the economy of God has the power to forgive you <laughs> every two minutes and 14 seconds. And he doesn't do it just once. You see, there's another scripture that says that his mercy is renewed every morning. And what I'm telling you is this. He wouldn't have made that kind of accommodation if we weren't capable of needing that kind of an accommodation. So the sins of the world could be 490 times a day, 365 years, how many thousand? Y'all still with me? But that's how powerful this blood is that was shed at Calvary, that the high priest of our soul is sprinkling on the things in heaven so that we can have forgiveness of sins. <laughs> I like this deal because I've got to deal with the human. I say this often. I'll repeat it again. Brother Harper is a great guy. But Mr. Harper's a jerk. And I, I need all the grace that I can get. I need all the mercy that I can find. I'm so glad for this, that his mercy endureth forever. And that's for his family of faith. Now, if you want to get in on it, how do you get in on a deal like that? You've got to do what he asked you to do. He said, you've got to enjoin yourself into my death, my burial, and my resurrection. His death. How do I get into the death of Jesus? The Bible says that when you repent of your sins, you die. You've got to tell Jesus, I'm, can I explain repentance to you? Now, you may have to do it a lot of times before you get out of this world. But I'll tell you what repentance is. It's admitting that you've done it wrong, tell God you're sorry, and then turn around and make up your mind you're not going to do it again. That's repentance. And sometimes it's filled with sorrow, and the Bible says that godly sorrow worketh repentance. Now, now here's, here's something for you. You know, I said... Sometimes God does things in nanoseconds. The moment that you sincerely say, I believe, Lord Jesus, in the power of your blood, and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, and I don't want to ever go back and do that particular thing ever again. You know how long it took God to forgive you? That quick. Somebody said to me one time, said, Brother Harper, I prayed the prayer. I believe that you know what you're talking about. But why is it that I feel like i got to keep praying about it? I said, it's not God's fault. He's already done his work in the records of the annals of glory. What's going on is people are having to keep talking about repentance because they're having a hard time of forgiving their self. I'm sorry I did it. I don't want to ever do it again. But I will also tell you this. If you will allow the Holy Ghost to help you, you'll be able to quote this scripture. There is therefore now no condemnation 
to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Somebody want the spirit of God in you. You want something to change you. You see, what makes Easter so marvelous is that he made that ascension into heaven. He sprinkled that blood. He did the work, if you please, of the high priest. And he sprinkled it on the altar. And the, and the cross became his altar where he sacrificed himself. But here's something interesting. Under the law, it said this. In Leviticus 4 and 6, it said that for a priest to administer the blood, he had to sprinkle it seven times. Help me count. They put a nail in his left hand. They put one in his right hand. They put one in his left foot. They put one in his right foot. They put a crown of thorns on him. They beat his back. They pierced his side. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times he shed blood. Why? Because he was the fulfillment of the law. He said, I came not to transgress the law, but that the law through me might be fulfilled. And the blood that was shed at Calvary will take care of anything that you'll let it take care of. Amen. Underlining the optimum word that you will let it take care of. So it was. He sprinkled it. And now that he did it, something else happened. You see, to get him ready to go on this trip, I've got so many good things here to tell you that, you know, y'all would like for me to finish at 15 minutes after the hour of 11. I've got 11 minutes and two hours preaching in front of me, but I'm going to be a good boy. I want you to come back because as important as anything is to be able to trust the preacher in the pulpit and for me to respect, respect your time schedule. But I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. And that is this. That Jesus Christ, before that he made the trip, it said that for a high priest to go into these holy places, that the first thing he had to do was dress in white linen. And when Jesus died at Calvary, Joseph of Arimathea took him down from the cross. And it says that he bathed him and that he wrapped him in white linen. And when he wrapped him in white linen, he was getting him dressed for the trip to go to the glory world as the high priest and sprinkle the blood on the altars that were in heaven and purchase our salvation. Yes, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. And so it was, what did he do? The Bible said that, the Bible doesn't say what I'm about to say, but it only makes sense. If he went to heaven with that white garment on, and the Bible said that before the high priest could come back among the people, he had to take the white garment off and had to put on the garments of the high priest to come out to be among the people. But before he did that, the Bible said he had to take a bath. Let your mind expand a second. And that's to tell you this. After he finished sprinkling the blood, and he took off that white garment. If he was going to bathe, the only place that was in heaven for him to bathe was in the crystal sea. And I believe that he bathed in the crystal sea, ladies and gentlemen. And then he was able to put on the garment of the high priest. And putting on the garment of the high priest, I will read to you in the scripture what he looked like whenever that he got dressed, if you please. And that was, he put on what is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 12. Here's what he looked like. This is the resurrected Jesus that John saw. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a girdle down to the foot 
and girt about the paps with a girdle of gold. His head was white hair, his wool, white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes was like flames of fire, and his feet like a defined brass as they burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was the sun, shineth in his strength. And I saw him, and I fell at his feet and dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not. Who was this? He said, I'm the first, and I'm the last. I'm he that was, and that is to come. <laughs> He's the Alpha, <laughs> He is the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. And then he said something. He said, and I got something. He said, I got the keys to death and hell. So after he got dressed, he went into the camp, descended into the lower parts of the earth. And uh, here's a scripture that's real important for you to know. And that is this. In the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, the Bible said when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. And it says the earthquake was so great on the moment that he died that it made all the graves in Jerusalem open up. And then it says the day that Jesus came out of the ground where that they could see him, when he came out with his glorified body. All of this that was taken on, I've just read to you, was so that he could get a glorified body. And designed so he could go into the spirit world now he descended into the lower parts of the earth. And then the Bible said that he ascended up and led captivity captive. And so the Bible says that when Jesus rose from the dead, physically rose now from the dead, it said with his glorified body that the saints that were in Jerusalem came out of the graves. And then when he ascended on high, he led them home with him. I'm going to share something with you. Everybody say it's appointed, under man, wants to die. How many of you have read the book of Acts, Claire, through? Anybody? Why, when you read the book of Acts, Claire, through, did you not read about Lazarus that had been raised from the dead? When you read the book of Acts, Claire, through, why didn't you read about the widow of Nain's son who he raised from the dead? When you read the book of Acts clear through, why didn't somebody mention Jairus' daughter that had been raised from the dead? Because when Jesus ascended on high and led captivity captive, he took all of those that had been resurrected home with him to glory. And he's coming back someday to get us. Woo! He's coming back someday to get us. So it is that he has ascended on high, that he might be the fullness of him that filled all in all. And here's what I want to tell you. It pleased God the Father that all the fullness of the Godhead dwell in him bodily. And so I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that Christ is become our high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not a building, neither of blood and goats of calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Are you glad that Jesus went to Calvary? But aren't you glad we've got a resurrection morning to celebrate the victorious Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Let us stand together. It's 11-11. Got four minutes to spare. Let's not waste any time. Bring that young man into the baptistry. This is Nick, Nicholas Adkins. 
Remember I said that repentance was death? Well, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, according to the scripture, is being buried with Christ. And to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost is to rise in the newness of life. Praise God. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, we're about to baptize Nicholas. This young man has repented of his sins. He came with purpose in his heart this morning, wondering if he could be baptized. Dear Lord, not only can Nicholas be baptized, but anybody that's here can be baptized this morning that wants to repent and make heaven their home and receive the Holy Ghost. So God bless us now as we take him into the distance of becoming a part of the family of faith in Jesus' name. Nicholas, upon the confession of your faith, the repentance of your sins, and your desire to be identified with your Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, we now baptize you into the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad, glad that, that I've been buried in the name of the Lord. Oh, in, in, the 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 Lord. Lord. in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I'm so glad that I've been buried in the name of the Lord. Oh, since the name of the Lord has been revealed. Well, Jesus is the name. Bless that holy name. Close your eyes and bow your heads. I'm here this morning and I'd like to live for Jesus. And I want you to pray for me that I'll have the courage to repent of my sins and be baptized and filled with His Spirit. If that's your feeling with nobody looking around, raise your hands and I'm going to pray for you. I see hands going up. I'm praying right now. Lord Jesus, the hands that have been raised are from people with an honest heart, hungry, God, wanting change in their life, wanting, Lord, the power to enjoy the resurrection of God. Bless them now, Lord. Give them strength and help them take the walk of faith to come to you and your blessings be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing another song. If you must go, you're dismissed to go. But if you want to come to this altar, you come right now and counselors will meet you here.